Hello and welcome to Think Like Toppers, daily news analysis of the Hindu paper. So myself Girish and today is 12th of Jan 2024. So let's get started. The first news is with regard to an appeal for classifying Bengali as the classical language. And so these kind of news are very important for prelims point of view. So the news is the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee in a letter to the Prime Minister has urged to officially list Bengali as the classical language. And further, Ms. Banerjee has pointed out to some facts with regard to Bengali language that already six Indian languages have been listed as classical languages. And which are those? That is Tamil, Telugu, Kannada or Malayalam and Odia and Sanskrit. So these are the six languages which are classified as classical languages and all these six classical languages feature in eight schedule. the 8th schedule of the Indian constitution. So as we can see that all, all, the, all the five, all the five South Indian languages are classical languages. So further, Bengali language has its origins with regard to 2005. So further, the Chief Minister has pointed out to the fact that the Bengali language has roots dating back to 2500 years ago and having a rich cultural heritage dating back to prehistoric times and having a very rich antiquity of Bengali language. Further, the CM has pointed out to having written literary text dating back to 3 to 4 BCE and the Bengali language is second most spoken language in India and is also the seventh most spoken language in the world as per the facts given by the Bengal CM. Further let us see basically what is a classical language is. So classical language is something which has a large and wide written literary heritage dating back to prehistoric times. That means as old as 2500 years. So the Ministry of Culture So, the Ministry of Culture notified the criteria for categorizing the classical languages only in 2014. However, though the criteria were given in 2014, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Odia, these were listed as classical languages way before 2014. For example, Tamil was categorized as a classical language in 2004 itself. So further to see the criteria given by the Ministry of Culture is the history has documented the early texts with high antiquity and a body of old literature or texts that the generation of speakers values as part of their heritage and the literary tradition must be unique and unaltered by borrowing from another speech group. There may be a gap between the classical languages as well as difference between classical language and literature. So these are the four criteria for classification of a classical language. Further, what is the benefits given to a particular language after categorizing it as a classical language? That is, we have three benefits. That is, 
For eminent researchers in the classical Indian language, there are two significant annual international awards offered. Further, the establishment of a center of excellence for classical language and a specific number of professional chairs for the classical languages are to be created by the UGC University Grants Commission starting at least in the central universities. So further we have a uh, news with regard to administration of the minority institution and uh, recently there was a case going on with regard to administration of the Aligarh Muslim University. The Supreme Court has observed that the right given to the religious and linguistic minorities to establish and administer their own educational institution under Article 30 Clause 1 of the Constitution was not intended to ghettoize them. The minority character of an inst educational institution is not lost if its founders who belong to a particular minority community chose administrators from other communities including majority community the chief justice has observed as that so further article 30 does not mandate that the administration of the minority educational institution should be only by the members of that particular community the provision confers the minority the discretion to choose administration of the institution the, so this article is important with regard to the fundamental rights conferred to the minority in India under article 30. So article 30 says that it is the right of minorities to establish and administer the educational institution. So this is what article 30 says. So this particular article is applicable to both religious minorities and linguistic minorities so if you don't have a careful reading in this article the UPSC can mislead with a statement like that article 30 with regard to right to establish and administer educational institution are applicable only to religious communities so such kind of misleading statements can be given in the presence so you have to be very careful with regard to these facts article 30 belongs to both religious and linguistic minorities so further when we see the clauses all the minorities shall have right to establish and administer educational institution of their choice so these readings can be clearly read from page number 7.16 and 7.17 of Lakshmi Kant. Further, the compensation amount fixed by the state for compulsory acquisition of any property of a minority education institution shall not restrict or abrogate the right guaranteed to them. So this provision was added by 44th Amendment, Constitutional Amendment of 1978, meaning if the government, if the government acquires the property of a minority educational institution, so this particular minority institution does not, does not lose their right to administer that particular institution. So this is a protection which was added by 44th constitutional amendment to further strengthen the article 30 and confer the rights to the minorities. So in granting aid, the state shall not discriminate against any educational institution managed by a 
minority. However, further you need to be very careful that the word minority, the word minority has not been anywhere in the constitution defined. It has not been defined in the constitution anywhere. So the these kind of facts are very important. Once again UPSC can mislead that the word minority is defined in the constitution under article for example 366 which deals with the definitions. So that is where we need to be very careful. Minority is the word which is not defined by the constitution. And there are three types of institution that is institution which seeks recognition plus aid. Second is those institution which seek only recognition but not aid. And the third one is those institution which do not seek neither recognition nor aid. So the institution of first two types that is which seeks for recognition and aid and only for recognition they are subject to the regulatory power of the state with regard to the syllabus, academic standards, discipline, sanitation, employment of the teaching staff so on. Whereas with regard to the third type which do not seek for recognition and aid will have complete autonomy. So they are free to administer their affairs but subject to operations of general laws that is with regard to contract laws, labor law, industrial law, tax law and economic regulations and etc. Further in Malankara Syrian Catholic College case 2007 the Supreme Court in which case the Malankara Syrian Catholic case of 2007 Supreme Court provided for certain criteria. it summarized the general principles relating to the establishment and administration of minority education institution. That is the right of minorities to establish and administer educational institution of their choice, to choose its governing body, to appoint its teaching staff, to admit eligible students and set up a reasonable fee structure, to use its properties and assets for benefit of institution. Further. The right conferred to the minorities under Article 30 is only to ensure equality with the majoritarian community and it is not intended to place the minorities above the majority community in an advantageous position. So this is to ensure the equity, to close the gap of discrimination or to close the gap of inequality between the majority community and the minority community. So this is just an enabling provision and there is no reverse discrimination in the favor of minorities. So further, the right to establish and administer educational institutions is not absolute nor does it include the right to maladminister. That means the government can make regulatory measures to ensuring educational character and standards and maintaining academic excellence and there can be checks on administration as are necessary to ensure that the administration is efficient and sound. That means these article that is article 30 is not absolute to the minorities that is it cannot be go unchecked. So there can be some reasonable restrictions in order to maintain that educational standards and academic excellence. 
so the next article deals with regard to the international relations and the diplomatic downfall which is going on between india and maldives so in this particular article let's see why there is a diplomatic law between the two countries recently so recently after elections the maldives china commit to greater strategic cooperation and sign nearly 20 memorandum of understandings during the president muse's visit the two countries agreed to draw up an action plan for building china maldives strategic partnership from 2024 to 2028 and beijing said it firmly opposes any external interference in malay's internal affairs so this external interference the beijing is directing towards india but ironically it does the opposite so noting that the strategic significance china maldives relations has become more prominent after election of mr president muse and he had been elected based on the campaign of india out so on his pro nationalist campaign uh based on india out narrative made him win his elections recently so he has been portrayed as a pro china leader in maldives who has been backed by the ex president abdullah yamin so mr muzu visited china mainly to bring in more strategic upliftment between their relation and to bring in trade investment invest maldives was the platform where he spoke with regard to welcoming china's investment in the island nation so during his visit prime minister modi was visiting lakshadweep which is near to kerala and some of the cabinet ministers of mr president muzu started commenting derogatorily against our prime minister in the twitter that is x platform so this led to the straining of the ties between india and maldives further so there was this boycott maldives campaign as a response from the indian side not diplomatically but informally so in this article let us further see what all went wrong recently in india maldives ties despite the president muzu and modi met alongside the environmental summit so prime minister narendra modi's tourism push for lakshadweep triggered a social media spat escalating the diplomatic clash between india and maldives and it worsened the already strained relationship between the indian ocean neighbors so the suspension of three maldivian ministers after the diplomatic black backlash was the result so india expressed its concern and it impacted the travel bookings and the boycott maldives trended on social media india maldives relations have hit a rough path since mohammad muzu's elections based on his india out campaign so what led to the india out campaign during solis administration that is maldives is a key maritime neighbor of india in indian ocean region the country's location holds a significant strategic importance and china's growing engagement in the region although maldives and india ties mostly cordial over the years so there has been a noticeable tilt towards the china 
during the presidency of the Progressive Party of Maldives leader Abdullah Yamin, which was between 2013 and 18. So Mr. Yamin was a pro-China leader and was willing to make Maldives part of the BRI initiative that is Belt and Road initiative. So the bilateral ties improved under Ibrahim Soli's presidency when he got elected in 2018. So aiming to reset the ties, one of its closest bilateral partners, Mr. Soli adopted India first foreign policy, which was the contradiction to the present policy of Mr. Mohammad Muzu. Ibrahim Soli got elected on the policy that India first. Now this present president has been elected based on India out campaign. So under Soli's administer, administration, the Maldives willingly established a closer relationship with India in areas of defense, security and economics. And Maldives makes no apology for close ties with India. This was the statement made from the then president to the Hindu in those times. So at present, there was a leading to an India out campaign spearheaded by the opposition. So the critics of Mr. Soli administration alleged that the government was compromising with the sovereignty of the nation and allowing Indian boots on the ground. And further, the anti-India campaign emerged as a male poll plank in 2023 presidential race. With few months to go, the PPM's Mohammad Muzu emerged as a joint opposition candidate and there was the withdrawal from President Yamin from the elections and Mr. Muzu was then serving as a mayor of Malay and he entered the poll fray. He built the India Out campaign to persuade the voters to re and he vowed to remove the Indian troops from Maldives shores. So he refused to be labeled pro-China, wouldn't allow Indian, Chinese or any other country's military presence in the archipelago to make himself as a neutral image. So he was not good or comfortable with being labeled as pro-China leader. So, however, he signaled his intention to build a closer ties with Beijing, highlighting the benefits of Chinese assistance to the Maldives. So, in September, he won with nearly 54% of the vote shares and first signs of a shift in foreign policy emerged when new Maldivian president skipped India and instead traveled to Turkey in November as his first official visit. So, Muzu since travelled to UAE and is currently on a five-day visit to China on the invitation of President Xi Jinping. So, he termed China as its valuable ally and integral collaborator. So, further, why did Mr. Muzu insisted on withdrawal of Indian soldiers? In his first address, while taking the oath, Muzu insisted on withdrawal of Indian soldiers and he pledged to safeguard the sovereignty and independence of Maldives. President's remarks that the country will not have any foreign military personnel grabbed the headlines in Maldives and the India first policy to an India out policy was the major shift. So this dip disappointed the Delhi and Maldives to look at the presence of its military personnel in the proper perspective. The new president made a formal announcement following his meeting with the Indian Prime Minister on sidelines of UNCOP climate summit in UAE and Mr. Modi agreed to his demand. So while statements issued by the two governments didn't mention any agreement, the sources in Indian government countered the claim saying that the discussions on the issues were still going on. Further, why did the decision to revoke the survey pact in India cause a stir in political circles? Music government not only moving to remove the Indian military personnel from its land, it also terminated the survey pact with India. 
So it revoked a key 2019 agreement with India for conducting surveys in Maldivian waters. The MOU for the hydrographic surveying signed during PM Modi's state visit during the then president Ibrahim Soli. So this was a commitment of two countries to maintain closer cooperation in defense and maritime security. So in December, Museo announced that the pact would not be renewed. So these are the ongoing issues or the diplomatic issues which is hitting a new low between India and Maldives. So why Maldives is so important for India? Why? Because when we look at the South Asian map, when we look at the South Asian map, so Maldives is an archipelago island nation somewhere here. So Maldives is a very very strategic island nation for China's BRI policy to circumvent India and establish its majoritarian dominance in the Indian Ocean. So its belligerence for foreign policy to make the littoral nations of India, the Indian neighbors to have a debt trap with China, with China being pumping billions of dollars to these nations in the name of infrastructural development to Pakistan, to Afghanistan, to Maldives, Sri Lanka, to Bangladesh, to Myanmar, to Bhutan, to Nepal, just to counter the India's presence or India's influence on its neighbor, China has been indulging in this debt trap policy to make these nations to vow for demands of China in the name of infrastructural development and prosperity. So, since the strategic position of the Maldives makes it very sensitive due to the Chinese presence. It is strategically important for India's maritime security. Because this is the only route where China can get access to India's territory through naval means. Further, as curious aspirants, we need to get to Google India Maldives Relations UPSC. So just type this and go to well established coaching platforms so that they give very refined articles and just read and make the notes rather than just listening to the videos and switching off them it won't make you remember what you have listened to so being curious is one of the key to crack this very challenging examination so let us read this article from drishti ias why the india maldives relationship is significant so as i told the strategic significance the focal point of india's neighborhood first policy the Maldives proximity to the west coast of India and its situation at the hub of commercial sea lines running through the Indian Ocean imbues it with the strategic importance to India. So it is one of the key countries for India's neighborhood first foreign policy. So India as a first responder to the Maldives. So swift response and immediate assistance during 1988 coup attempt laid the foundations for development of trust and enduring friendly bilateral relations between India and Maldives. Further, Indian armed forces acted promptly executing Operation Cactus in that time. India was the first to assist Maldives during 2004 tsunami 
as well as water crisis in Mali in December 2014. India's swift dispatch of 30,000 doses of measles vaccine in 2020 to prevent the outbreak and the Maldives and India's rapid comprehensive assistance in Maldives during the COVID-19 pandemic as being the first responder. So this is an edge for India to influence Maldives to be a first responder and to gain the trust with the nation. So China can't be the first responder when we think about the proximity between the China's geography and Maldives geography. So this is where we can counter China's belligerent presence in Indian Ocean. India also as a net security provider. So it is importance of India's strategic role in Maldives as well recognized with India being a net security provider. The comprehensive action plan for defense was signed in 2016 to consolidate the defense partnership. And both the nations are key players in maintaining safety and security of Indian Ocean region, thus contributing to India-led Sagar vision that is security and growth for all in the region. And both the nations have joint armed exercises named Ekuvarin, Dosti, Ekata and Operation Shield. So these keywords are very important and can be asked in match the following. Further, in economic and trade engagements, tourism. India is among the largest sources of visitors of Maldives, which is heavily dependent on tourism to run its economy. Tourism is the largest sector which contributes to Maldives economy. So the importance of tourism can be decoded from the words of Mr. Mohammad Musu's recent China visit where he appealed that uh, he welcomed the Chinese visitors to Maldives wholeheartedly to visit more to the Maldives recently. So further, in 2013, India topped the chart in sending largest number of tourists to the Maldives, amounting to 2.09 lakhs. And with regard to trade, India emerged as this Maldi Maldives. India emerged as Maldives' second largest trade partner in 2022, marking 300 million US dollars mark. So there is a bilateral US dollar currency swap agreement between the RBI and Maldives Central Bank. Further, the development and capacity building, that is infrastructure projects with regard to the Greater Malay Connectivity Project, which is largest ever infrastructure mal project in Maldives. And the uh, Hanimadu International Airport Development Project under Indian Credit will add a new brand new terminal to cater 1.3 million passengers a year. In healthcare sector, uh, the presence of Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital besides helping out to set up a state of our cancer facility and that will connect over 150 health centers. And with regard to educational programs, India has helped to set up Institute of Technical Education in 1996 and also has started a program providing training to Maldivian teachers and youth for vocational training in 5.3 million US dollar project. So the largest number of training opportunities for Maldivian National Defense Force meeting around 70% of their defense training requirements. With regard to cultural relations, India and Maldives share ethnic, linguistic, cultural, religious links steeped in antiquity. According to anthropologists, the origins of Divehi, the Maldivian language, are, dates back to S Sanskrit and Pali language. So the Indian expatriate community in Maldives has a total strength of 27,000. So majority are teachers in that country. So the ongoing Lakshadweep issue, as we discussed during the Prime Minister of India's visit to Lakshadweep, the Maldivian cabinet ministers criticized his photographs on X platform, 
very cheaply so that led to the firing of those ministers as the repercussion and uh, the mal boycott maldives printed on x platform and there was large scale cancellation of the bookings to maldives which really hit hard to the tourism there and the india out campaign as discussed from the muse selection manifesto where he built the narrative of as india's presence as a threat to security and sovereignty of the island nation and revocation of the hydrographic survey agreement the presence of the china factor that is the string of pearls bri the free trade agreement and the present uh, mous to upgrade maldives china relations to strategic partnership so what should be the way forward india's coastline is adorned with a mix of well known and undiscovered beach destinations and the possible destinations may include goa kerala so on so so that is it is better to engage in a soft diplomacy with regard to maldives and build more trust by not following the big brother attitude by india so india's neighborhood first policy is really a game changer which is going on in the present regime where many of many of the acts during the water crisis in 2014 during the covid pandemic or healthcare or educational support which is being given to maldives is really a way forward with the soft diplomacy skills to win over the trust of the maldivians so further when to counter china strategically in future days after the betterment of the diplomatic ties maldives can be associated with the quad plus platform where us india australia japan are engaged in strategic diplomacy and it could have a very good leverage to counter china in future days so that is all for today's current affairs of the hindu newspaper analysis if you like the video please do like share and subscribe to think like toppers i hope you find the video educative and engaging if you need any kind of changes from my side please do let me know in the comment section and let's build a educated community on this youtube channel think like toppers subscribe now thank you